Hi, I'm Deathlick. In this video, I'm going to be going through the basics of Premiere Pro. If you prefer each process split up in mini videos, you can check them out on Skillshare where you can join for a free trial. I'll be slowly adding extra clips to Skillshare which won't be in this video, so please do check that out if you'd like to check them out. To open up the project once you've opened up Premiere Pro, new project, set whatever you, wherever you want to save your, your project. The browse, same as project, same as project, so wherever you save it, I like saving it just over here-ish to set it. Name your project. Okay. And then the settings, you can fiddle with this, actually do the settings you want, for example 1920 by 1080, but however if you have video footage you like the size of, you'll just import that and you can change the settings that way. Mm, 50 for animation 24. This bit is made void if you do it a, d a different way. So th this part doesn't really matter at the moment. If you're doing it this other way I'm going to show you quite a minute. So to import files you either click, there's two ways, you can click here. This. So you can import it this way, open file. And to delete it, you just delete it. Or there's another way, you just click and drop. You can actually click and drop directly onto... Oh, so you hold this, you can actually import it straight into the thing. You can change the sequence settings by doing it this way, or if you want to keep it to your existing settings. But I want to make it to the size of that for now. To make that screen build it, to hide that, to lock a file, that's how you lock it so you, example, you can't cut. This is the cut tool. This, this button right here is the cut tool, so it cuts the files like so. To undo the change, you just do uh, Control Z. Another way to undo or redo a change is on Edit, Undo, Redo. To view a single video, you just click on there and you can scroll through, or you just play it. There is two ways to alter the sound. For example, you, do, you can do audio gain. For example, increase, go like that, or decrease. do that for now. Audio. You can normalize. That is too loud. It's just playing with the functions. Another way is if you see that yellow line you can increase it by doing that. Well, a little bit and then you can decrease. But the easiest way is just to do audio game if you want to do the whole and how thing. To, if you want to ease and ease out, you press control, you click on the point over here. Example that will ease in. That's a sound. Same principle with the transparency. Okay, to do text, you click on title, new title. You can do either one of these, for now I'm going to do still. Uh, you can name it. Okay. For now I'm just going to put... Uh, you can play around with these functions, these, these letters. For now I'm going to put derp. Derp e derp 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 derpy derp 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 transparency is over here now this is a fun bit different fonts this is a font style medium slanted 
These are just different. You can have it like this. So if you don't want it, if you don't want these ones, it's kind of like a PowerPoint ones. You can pick these ones. Solid. You could pick, for example, gradient. You could pick different gradients. For instance, you want a black and white. But I'm gonna do. Yeah, derpy derp derp. This is just an example. This is gonna look awful, but you can make it look better. This is the angle. This is you can animate this as well. This bit you can animate as well. It's just a matter of playing around with it. That looks awful, so I am going to change it back to black. Sometimes, even if you can do it, doesn't mean you should. Increase the size just by playing with that. You could. The other way of increasing the size is. Uh, there is a size bit. Font size. Font size, or you can do it for here. More, If you want it more uniform, you can do it for um, example. Yeah. But that is too big, so I will shall do it back to. Oh, oh dear. I'm just going to do it from here because it's just easier. Derp, derp, derpy derp. Okay. You can even do these. Little squares, change of colours, little lines. Hmm, I'm gonna make a better colour. No, instead of white, I shall go. No sense in the contrast of this background, but this is just an example. And then you just, I don't know if you could see over here, you just drop that onto the video timeline. To crop, for example, you type in the word crop into the effects, or you can click onto the video effects transform crop. There's two ways. You can, if you already got the file selected, just click the crop button, or you click the crop button and you drag and drop onto the file. Okay, this is the function. So left. I'll show you an example where it's instead of just positioning. Yeah, let's just have a. That single one there. If you want to position it. There's, there's many ways of doing this. For example, you just click on it, on these bits, like that. But if you want to animate it, I'll show you. To edit the transparency, you do that. For example, the yellow line. You can animate the transparency, I'll show you. The motion, you click on that. So let's see. Position. Do you start animating, you click on that button right there and it creates that. You can move it, just select it and just shift it along. And then once you want to add more, you click onto that. For example, I'll put animate it there, put it there. I'm gonna put I'm gonna take the sound off now because it's just annoying. So let's see what it looks like. Oh dear, no. Wait, let me see. Oh, I selected the wrong one. So that, do that again. Yep. And let's just say, move it across the screen. You can, you know, it's animated if it's got that little line there where it tells you where it's moving. Yeah, that's a bit trippy. Rotate, scale, same thing, just click on that and then once you've done that, and if you just want to delete it, just 
click the delete button when you select it and it deletes the whole thing, deletes the animation. If you want to adjust your workspace, you can do that. Another way to adjust your workspace, example Windows, Workspace, and you can reset your entire workspace, you just click that. Do you want to reset editing? Yeah. So yeah, that's how you edit the, if you want to reset your workspace. To save the project, go save as, in the file, one, test. To preview a video, if it's, if your video is lagging, if the video is lagging within the preview, within the program, you can render the whole sequence to preview in the program without you making it into a video. You do sequence, run the entire work area, and then in. this is an example, this is what it should show up. Then this part should turn green after it's done. If it's red then there's something wrong with the file, it could be corrupted if it's still doing that, or if there's a space. So this is it's green now. Before it was blocky and now it's all smoothish. This is this is what it will look like when it's rendered into an actual video compared to before when it was all blocky. To export the file you do file export media decoder, yep. Personally I prefer doing H264. This saves it as a video if you want to save it as a PNG sequence, other format, but put or a GIF. Personally, GIFs are better for Photoshop. For now, I'm going to do HD, H264. Change the preset. Example, I normally go for HD 1080, which is 19, 20, 1080. Change it to 20, 24 is good for, it's standard for animation, but for a normal video. Personally, I'm only go for 50. Main, high, 5.1 for video footage. You can go lower, but the quality just drops. The higher, the better for this bit. Okay, this is overkill. Personally, I prefer doing the same number as target bitrate to maximum bitrate. 15 is su sufficient for a video. For a more basic thing, you can go for 10. The higher, the better, but it just increases the file size. Normally, if you have, example, if the target bitrate is 10 and you have a maximum bitrate of 15, the video quality is a bit, a bit streaky. But in my personal experience, it's better to have the same numbers for both target and maximum, so there's no streaky video output name pick a place to save the file name the video and this is yeah one test waterfall save export and it'll, it'll bring up this thing to encode 